Hey guys, how you doing? This is Will Salas coming at you live. Well, sort of live from Brooker's Hobbies over here in Garden Grove. Uh, they were kind enough to let us do a video, a little kickstarting success here. I'm going to be here with Ramon Rea going to hit over his current Kickstarter, Dungeon Brawl. We're out in their back patio. We're going to try and figure out what makes a Kickstarter great and how you can help Dungeon Brawl reach its funding goal. Be back with you in just a second. Okay. Hey guys, okay, welcome back. Will Sellers, I'm here with Ramon Rea. He is the designer of Dungeon Brawl. Um, Dungeon Brawl is basically what happens after you've gone on your adventure with all your friends, you've beaten the dungeon, you've killed the boss, you've gathered all the treasure up, and now you gotta decide who gets what. Is it gonna be the wizard because his lightning bolts kept everything at bay and saved your necks? Is it gonna be the rogue or the thief? because his sneaky hands got a few more gold pieces than you thought he was capable of? Or is it going to be the hero, because he took the bulk, of the, the bulk of the hits and managed to get you guys through safely? Ramon, why don't you go ahead and give us a little bit more background on Dungeon Brawl. Alright, so, basically, uh, like you said, they all finished uh, the adventure and they're divvying up everything, and they can't decide who gets what. So now they're fighting each other, basically, for the rights of the treasure now. So... It is a, a customizable card game based on D&D &D actions and uh, the deck construction of magic and a little bit of a deck building element. So basically a customizable deck. So do you necessarily have to build your own deck or does it come pre-stacked for you? Do you choose it? Is there a deck building phase? How exactly does that aspect work? Uh, uh, everybody does a draft of the characters, and every uh, say I'll pick him, you pick that, and whatnot. We'll get our respective pool of cards, and uh, construct a twelve-card deck based uh, around these specific abilities and actions. So, I have you know Bull Rush, or I have Quick Draw, or whatnot, and the wizard will have something like Lightning Bolt or Fireball or whatnot. But you get to choose what goes into your deck before the game even starts. So each character gets their own deck of cards that you get to pick 12 cards to battle with. Do you get to add any cards during the game? Do you get any additional abilities to gather cards? Or is what you pick your destiny? Yep. Uh, you decide your loadout and that is what you get stuck with. There is a small deck building element which are the wound cards and treasure cards which we are showing over here. Um, Let's show them the board real quick, okay? Because yeah. it's a unique board. It's different from most game boards that we see. So it has trap deck, your played traps, your removed wounds, and your wound deck. So there's multiple, there's two decks at least that get used on this and different things. So explain to us what the different decks do and then about the board itself. Okay, so uh, the trap deck, if you've ever played Bang High Noon, uh, it operates very much like that. There's going to be a level of traps that will be right here. Uh, at the start of the first player's turn, they will flip over a trap, whatever it is. There's a crossbow trap, and everybody has to follow whatever it says on there. Usually it'll be something to the uh, tune of roll twice, and it affects those squares. The board is made up of six squares here. You use one, two, three, so four, five, it's six. It's a little bit hard to tell on camera, but there's one square, two square, three square, four, five, and six. So essentially they're all numbered. It might be harder to see on camera just because it may blend in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Games don't photograph well, guys, unless we have perfect lighting, but we're using the patio here at Brooker's Hobbies, and we're dealing with what we got, guerrilla filmmaking style. No microphones, no good camera equipment. We're doing this off cell phones. I am making Ramon deal with my need to try something new. Right. So, uh, the... Traps will affect the players. They'll be somewhere on the board. You end up rolling, and it's affecting number four. It's affecting number three. So, so that relates to the individual spaces. Correct. So, right there, four and three are being affected. If, uh, if there was something that required a roll, let me see. Yeah, roll twice. Wizard warp. It would affect those two spaces. Wizard warp causes those two places to switch spots. So it'd be like that. So, if uh, the warrior wasn't in range of the wizard he now is and is able to attack him so it uh, changes the dungeon and the action that you get to take all right so let me show you guys this real quick is this the finished artwork by the way 
Uh, no. The, no. It's going to have a background to it. and. But this is the, the finished character art. Yes, the finished character okay, art. Okay, so guys, if you look at this, uh, these are pretty awesomely made. Who did your art? Um, I just uh, picked up an artist online and we've been working with each other. Well, because the artwork, whoever did this for you, and I'd love to have their name later so we can drop it in the link at the bottom, because this artist did some solid work. The artwork is all consistent for all the other characters. Now, you have five characters here that we have cutouts for. Are these all going to be included? Are there more characters? Are we going to look at any stretch goals that unlock any extra characters? Um, so far, it's just going to be the five basic classes right now, and in the future, uh, should I get Dungeon Brawl 2, there's going to be five new classes that I have in various stages of production right now. Alright, cool. I do have one complaint, though. I do halflings. I do a halfling rogue, sometimes paladin if I want to be obnoxious. I don't see a halfling here, so... Do I need to back this? Uh, yes, you do, because she's very small. She's like by a four foot eight. All right, that's halfling. basically, that's half a halfling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got a unique board. We've got some great looking artwork on the characters. And the artwork actually carries through. And we'll have better pictures of this added to the video. But the artwork is super consistent all the way through. The characters are well represented the same way as they are in the standees. Um, for the standees, you mentioned that there's going to be background art for all of them. Yes. Uh, currently, I don't have it. It wasn't printed with this copy of the game, but I have it with another. Okay, so you came up with this idea. Let me tell me your Doc Brown hit your head on the toilet, came up with your flux capacitor moment for this game. When did that happen? Uh, that happened when I played um, Red Dragon Inn. Red Dragon Inn is a, a very big inspiration for me creating this game. Um, for those of you who don't know, it's um, uh, a bunch of adventurers that are fighting over treasure and drinking themselves to death. And uh, you know, what really intrigued me was they all had uh, customizable decks. Oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> I was trying to signal our camera person to go look at the camera, make sure we haven't run out of space yet. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. All right, so Red Dragon Inn was kind of your inspiration. Yeah. Um, are there any other games that influenced you? Monopoly, Sorry, Hungry Hungry Hippo? Uh, no, it was it was basically Red Dragon Inn, just because each character had a specialized deck, and that was something that I wanted, is uh, effects and spells and actions all uh, influenced through the cards you had, so the cards you chose were the things you could do. Yeah, Red Dragon Inn is a really great game. I think they're going on their seventh edition now. Or like eighth. Eighth or something? Yeah. It's such a great, consistent game. All the characters, every game's unique. You play it with different people. It's kind of a fun game. It's not your standard, you know, game. It, it's very much, you know, there's a gambling element to it. There's fighting. It's It's got a whole setup. If you haven't played that, you should play it after you've backed this Kickstarter. I always tell people that they should play Munchkin first, then play this, and then play Red Dragon in last. So it's getting to level 10, then fighting over the treasure, then going back to the inn to fight, to fight. Over, over the gold. And then once the gold's all divvied up, <laughs> and you just sit and drink. Okay, so oh wait, you're, how many stretch goals have you got? Because I know a lot of Kickstarters go crazy with the stretch goals. They've got like something like 25 stretch goals to reach, and they've got this target of like a million dollars for their last stretch goal. What, is, what are your stretch goals? Uh, I only have a very few. Uh, it's basically quality of life stuff. So uh, normally you just have a single uh, card that represents your character. It'll be, it'll say your special ability, and that's it. Uh, one of them, yeah, there we go. That's a good example right there. It would just have what you do on there, and that's your character. I wanted to actually add a little tableau right here, so you can put your cards, your play area. Um, another thing was uh, more character art because uh, currently all the characters have pretty much the same art for their abilities and I wanted to change it so a move action shows them moving and attack action shows them attacking and all the other actions involved as well. Um, that's uh, pretty much it. A couple of uh, extra abilities too per character so I'm upping the, the card count of every deck. Okay, so you're going to make your choices a lot harder when it comes to building your specific deck. Um, what is your funding goal at? I mean, is it, is it going to be crazy expensive? Are we talking $50,000? Or are we looking at something more reasonable like... No, it's uh, currently at 14000 
fourteen thousand is not a hard goal. You know, it's not an out of sight goal. It's not a cool many or not goal. You know, where they're up in five million dollar range, but it is a workable goal. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you get that number? How long did you work to get that number? Um, it was uh, basically going through a bunch of manufacturers and seeing the numbers that they can give me for the uh, uh, the quantity to make, and then. Uh, with or without this item or this thing, that's why I have the stretch goals is to improve the game. So uh, right now I have it at bare minimum, and then if the stretch goals are met, I can build upon that. And then plus the shipping from China, the freighting, all the other uh, back end stuff that nobody really takes into account. What is your target for delivery once you fund it? What's um, your target? I'm hoping for uh, September. Of this year of this or next year. year? Of this year. That's a pretty, it's pretty close. I mean, it, you imagine from right now, we are currently in March. September is literally right around the corner. I mean, we've got six, seven months. Mm -hmm. That's cutting it close. Do you have any anticipation or backup plan should you, because these things happen, you know, Kickstarters have a goal, something happens with manufacturing, things get pushed back. What's your plan for that? I love that we're outside and we have the helicopters going off. We have cars driving by. It's like we're next to a freeway at this particular juncture. We may not be doing this format ever again. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Uh, so, we'll wait, wait till that goes by and ask me again because I, I was kind of lost in a... In the... Alright, so, it's a... Never mind. Um, so, what is your backup plan should September come and go and you still haven't got the game into port yet? Because we all know um, once games come from overseas, they sit in Long Beach for an indeterminate amount of time before customs releases them. Right. Um, it's it's really out of the um, the hands of everybody except for like the freighters and whatnot. Like there was a big strike that they had and nobody could get anything in and out for like six months. There's literally nothing you can do. It's out of your hands. It's just an Basically, but active guard. How do you plan so. on, on letting your back? Are you just gonna do regular oh. updating, or oh, are you no, gonna... it's the constant updating. It's I just, I won't as I know the information. I relay it to my backers because you okay. really want to have a relationship with your backers. Aside from just here's the game, here's the money. What about fulfillment? Who's gonna be doing fulfillment for you? I know that's always a, a tricky question. Have you got that far in the planning, or are you still looking for fulfillment? Or are you gonna do fulfillment by yourself? No, it's uh, all backer kid, backer kid stuff. Backer kid, okay. They've got a pretty solid reputation for delivery and for making sure components and everything are in the right boxes. So that's a pretty good deal. Um, okay, I'm going to do two scenarios. I always do this with my Kickstarter interviews. I'm going to give you two scenarios. One's the worst case scenario. It doesn't fund. What happens now? Um, back to the drawing board. We just, no, we... we Shut down. That's it. It's over. It's over. You're not yeah. going to try again. You're yeah. not going to try and regroup your Kickstarter. Um, I will retry. Is I basically have to ask what was done wrong because I've done everything on my part that I do. I've got reviewers. I've got the advertising and whatnot. But um, I don't know. Maybe it's just not a game that people want, or maybe it was done at a bad time because there's a, a lot of big Kickstarters that are getting expansions and whatnot, and then there's also competition uh i just dropped a hundred and twenty dollars on name whatever the, the dinosaur game or whatnot and <laughs> yeah yeah oh okay but um but yeah there's competition maybe we're not going to get out fast enough maybe you know what there's a lot of things and then i just i'm going to regroup and Try and release it again. Maybe next year. Maybe the year after. Maybe earlier in the spring or something when right. the ideas are fresh and people are, before people people are already getting into the summer mindset. So I think a lot of Kickstarters they're doing well, and a lot of them I think could do better than they are currently, just because people are getting out of the mindset of it's spring. They're moving already into summer, especially in California because we have two seasons: real summer and sort of summer. So. Mm -hmm. I think that, that's happening. Okay, here's your second scenario, because I hate ending these things on a sour note. The Kickstarter funds. Mm -hmm. You're funded. What are you going to do besides... Cry. <laughs> yeah, uh, tears of happiness. Yeah, oh, aside, aside from my... Okay, so it funds... Um... It, it funds. What's the first thing you're going to do? Um... You're going to call your parents and say, hey, 
It wasn't a waste of time. People believed in me. Um, well, there's going to be, uh, there's going to be just a giant party and video and me just thanking everybody and probably crying because it's been a dream of mine for three years. I've been working on this for three years and, uh, to see it actually become a game that would be the best thing in the world is. So you see yourself, you go over to your friend's house, have a game night and, hey, you want to play this game I picked up, Dungeon Brawl? Yeah, pretty much. And then. Uh, God, yeah, words can't explain. Honestly, it's just it's it's. <laughs> I have funny. I've talked to a lot of Kickstarter creators and stuff and developers, and a lot of them have told me it doesn't become real until they have everything in hand, mm-hmm. until the, the crates have arrived, they've sorted the boxes, and those first couple have gone out to backers. That's when it became real for them. Other than that, it was just like this surrealness because you don't get any cash in hand; it goes to a bank account. You don't actually get anything tangible in your hands until the moment that ship lands and they make you come pick it up within 24 hours at least start getting a, a storage fee. <laughs> Alright guys, so Ramon Rea, Table Flip Games. Kickstarter's currently live. Is there anything else you want people to know? Oh, shoot. Uh, uh, just the customization of the game and uh, the uniqueness of the game because I don't see anybody making something like this uh, in it, the future or is, now or past. It is different, so it is a risky maneuver on your part to make a game like this. But mm-hmm. I see the value, and I'll be honest with you guys, I know Ramon for a long time. We do the convention circuit. I've watched this game go from cardboard cutouts and tokens to a more prototypey design to actual almost finished product. So. There is some involvement for me. I mean, we've known each other for a while. We've shared hotel rooms. So I've never gotten a chance to play a full game of Dungeon Brawl just because when we see each other at cons, he's running demos, I'm running demos, and I don't want to take away from his time to introduce new people to the game. That's my little FYI. Mm -hmm. But, all right, guys, Dungeon Brawl is live on Kickstarter right now. We need your help to make this game fun, make it a reality, get it in your hands and mine. Happy gaming. May the dice always roll in your favor, and there'll be a link at the bottom to the Kickstarter. Thank you very much.